Well, let's go ahead and get started. Y'all know me, I'm Solmats. I'll be uh, showing you a little bit of Neon Beats tonight, or today, whenever you're watching this, if you're watching it in post. First thing I'd like to do is just go over just like the basics of every level. I'm gonna go over it from a beginner's standpoint and uh, kind of build up on every level and show the basics and then some of the more strategic techni techniques as you uh, learn more. I mean, basics are what you're see seeing here in these things in the tutorial, which is largely what we're following here in the tutorial. One thing I do want to say is almost every time you get to these vertical climbs, uh, you're wanna, you you the thing that you're going to want to do is just jump to the wall because it's going to feel right to just jump to the wall ahead of you. But almost every time the faster thing to do is to jump on the opposite wall. It's counterintuitive. Counter. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Here we go. My bad. Yes, there we go. <laughs> I'll restart the level. I'm just in the tutorial now. Yeah, in the tutorial, it gives you these uh, these little screens that kind of like tell you the, what you're supposed to do. I like how it's not showing it. That's new. I've never seen that before. That's never happened before. Let's get there again. That's weird. Well, it's not important anyway. It's just telling you that you can do wall jumps, which the cool thing about the walls is all you have to do is just touch them and you can hold, let go of the controller and you'll slide down. Uh, you don't have to hold the opposite direction to, to jump off of it. Like off of this wall, I don't need to hold left to jump left. All I gotta do is hit the jump button and it'll automatically jump left for me. So that does, that cuts down on the inputs you have to actually put in. It's, it's a little bit easier than it seems. You just have to mash the jump button. But what I was saying about climb sections, when you approach them, you're going to feel like the, the most natural thing to do is just jump off the wall ahead of you and do this. And that's fine. But if you really want to start speed running, almost all of these climbs are faster. If you start going up the left, the left side, the opposite side. And if you get a really good climb, you'll get up to the top like this uh, without having to get the extra jump off the side like that. That saves even more time. So everything is very small optimizations to get the fastest times. Here again, you can just kind of slide down the walls for safety if you want to. Because they're just there. And like it shows on the screen, it's showing you how to do it over there on the left hand side. For speed purposes though, like I said, all you have to do is hold away from a you can hold away from a wall or hit the jump button to jump off of it. So I just jump off this one and then hold right, and you'll automatically fall away from the spikes. And you can see how that's faster than waiting like this to jump. Instead, you can just jump and then fall to the right, and you're immediately going. So jump and then fall to the right. Yay, ropes. We hate these and we love them. Now, the, the thing with the ropes is you can jump on them and you can swing and, and do the momentum and everything. But as long as you hit the button to jump, as soon as you're touching that rope, you're going to get the jump off of it. You're going to get the same momentum that you hit the rope with. So you want to hit the jump button as soon as you touch the rope and you don't have to actually build up momentum. You can use the momentum that you came in with your jump. Or if you, if it, the situation demands that you can swing, uh, which you'll see in some levels, it is safer to do that in some areas. 
Like right here, I do need to swing in order to get to this, this second rope, but as soon as I touch that second rope, I hit the jump button and I preserve my momentum and it swings me directly across. Just like that. Same thing here, as soon as I hit this rope, I'm just gonna hit the jump button and fling me directly across. Bubbles are interesting. Um, they have a neutral jump, so like if you just hit them, they're just neutral, have a certain height. But some bubbles, when you hit them, you need to be holding down the jump button and they'll give you additional height. Uh, these particular ones don't have that mechanic, but other ones do. And I'll point those out as we get to them in later levels. Notes you can collect as a thing to add additional layers to the music in the levels, but they're not required for the Any% percent run. If you want to collect all music notes, then you're going to want to grab all the notes, though. As you can see, we've encountered our first platforms that are timed to the music. These are timed to the, uh, the kick drum. So, while it's not really a rhythm platform per se, everything that you do is dictated by the cycles that are on the rhythm. So I like to call it a precision platformer more so than a rhythm platformer, even though it's, it is a rhythm platformer according to the developers. Well, let's get into the meat of it. We'll go straight into level one and really start talking about this. Triangle's bad. And this is all pretty self-explanatory. Again, as you approach something like this, you're, you're gonna wanna... You're gonna wanna just go off the right side like that, but it's faster to go off the left. You see, I immediately jump off this wall and I'm, and I'm already up to the top here. It's only four jumps as opposed to... Five jumps. With this climb, it can be a little finicky, because you can hit these spikes very easily. The, the safest way is to jump when you're closer to the spike, instead of jumping from further away. If you jump further away, you get really close to like that top spike there. If you get really close and then start your jumps, you have plenty of room. So I like to get closer to the wall and then do my jumps. It's resetting this so I can show this. The best way to do this is as soon as this turns, just start falling and press right. And you'll automatically be on the cycle to get through that gate. So, press right and you're through the gate. Here, we're at another point where we can just go left or right. Yes, exactly, that top spike. It can get you. Here's uh, one of the notes up here. If you swing to the left, there's a note. Again, we don't pick these up in any percent, but I'm going to show off where they are as I go through each level. But ideally what you're going to do is just jump off the wall and immediately hold right and then jump to the right. So you can keep moving. The cool thing about this bubble is you don't actually have to jump onto it. You can just run into it and it automatically bumps you over the, the thing. So that's one less button press for you. Just run right into that. Here's another thing like the first level except we have uh, spikes underneath us. So the first one we'll get momentum on and then just press jump as soon as we hit the second rope. This is self-explanatory. Everything's on a cycle. And here again, either you can fling across this, which is, is not recommended, it's a top level strat. It's very difficult even for me to do. I just build up momentum and I swing across. That was a little too much, you can just easily swing. Again here, I like to go a little bit closer to the right side, to the wall, because it sets me up better to not hit these spikes. Uh, if we start from further away like this, we're almost guaranteed to hit one of those top spikes. See how close we get to them? I, I don't like that. If you start from closer to the wall, you don't even get close to the spikes. Here it's just about patience. 
you just want to you can just wait if you're here on the wrong cycle or just zoom through if you're here on the correct cycle but if you're going for music notes there's one here if you time your jump correctly there's a music note you want to grab up here I'm just going back here so I can show that there's this jump here but you'd think again you'd want to go to the right and left and jump there is a faster way to just jump off the left and we're immediately up here so again faster way just go off the, the opposite of what you think here we're gonna be a little bit more technical again this is like a tutorial you could just take your time and slide down the walls but it takes a lot of time while you're sliding this is very very slow but you can see how slow that is so you're gonna want to try and instead jump off the walls and if you can release and come back over to the wall before you fling so like hold away from the wall a little bit when you're on the second wall and then reconnect with it if you see what I mean I, I press right a little bit to get off of the wall and then immediately press left just to save a little bit of time so I'm not grinding on the wall here we're on cycle platforms again this room is interesting because uh, the best way to do this jump here I find is to let it bounce you straight up the wall and then just easily jump off if you try to rush this too much you will just chaotically jump into spikes so always go for the most consistent setup which is just bouncing straight up and jumping off the wall here you can just launch across this rope like this or you can take your time and do the swing either way whichever is more comfortable as you build up more expertise in the game you'll probably go for the swing or the uh the fling but the swing is also valid The thing with this jump over to this rope is you don't want to jump over here too early because if you try to do it too late you don't get enough height to get to the rope I like to wait until it's it's already like just turned instead of too early I'm trying to show off too late <laughs> but I keep hitting the rope that was close. There, that was too late. If it starts turning before you jump, then it's just gonna drop you off into the into the spikes. So it's best to wait for the right cycles. I call this level patience because everything in this level requires a lot of patience to go quickly. Here you can just fling over to these if you want. Uh, or you can take the time to, to you know swing either way it's about the same as far as time because you see if you swing you go further into the hallway or if you fling you get there quicker there is a note down here so if you want to go all notes there's the third note here's the final room this one is a little tricky again everything's on a cycle it's similar to the other I like to do a slide down this wall before I jump to this, just to be consistent. Uh, you can swing, just take your time, and just pay attention to the platforms, and then swing over to the right. Again, you just take your time. And then jump over to the right what I like to do to go faster is to fling across these bottom ropes and then I rush it a little bit the, the thing about resetting the rooms is you can see those ropes are those ropes are all moving around now they're no longer neutral they're not going to behave the way I want them to so when you're speedrunning, if you're ever resetting a room and they're no longer neutral, a lot of the strats like this aren't going to work the way you want them to on your second try. So it's one thing to be cognizant of, of 
how terrible the ropes can be if you have to reset a room. The beginning of level 2 here is actually heavily cycle based, so we're kind of racing to get to the end of it. I do want to show off that, again, I, I like to jump and give a little bit of a slide down on this wall before I start jumping upward. Because if I jump up too high, I will hit one of those spikes. Like that. So I slide down a little bit before I start jumping up. I'm going to restart it because we're on a cycle. Slide down, do your jumps, I drop down into these launchers, and then we're on these things. Now these things can be kind of slippy. Um, you want to just make sure that you just pay attention. Again, it's all about patience. The more you try and rush things in this game, the more you're going to make mistakes. So part of first learning the speedrun is just being very patient with the levels and learning the cycles. The more comfortable you get with the cycles, the more you can manipulate yourself, not just to save if you make mistakes, um, but to do the optimal strats when you go start to learn them. Let's go ahead for uh, the final part of this cycle at the beginning. Some disappearing and reappearing platforms. These have a very strange rhythm to them. There's a click, and then there's a click, click, click. There's a triplet click. And then they're gonna do this again, the click, click. And the triplet. So it's 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 a cycle that's longer than a 4-4. Four, four. As long as you do everything consistently when you first get there, it'll always be on the same cycle. But if you get there too late, then you do need to pay attention to uh, what you're listening to as far as the music, to know when those things are going to reappear. Click, click, and we're immediately over here to the box. Here's our first on-rail segment. These are kind of self-explanatory. You can just kind of, again, these are kind of putting together all of the stuff you've learned so far. So we're just jumping off walls, jumping off ropes. In this section, you do want to make sure that you are jumping just a little bit before you reach the edges. You want to be jumping like right around here in the middle. Uh, because otherwise you're going to overshoot these bubbles. And I'll show that off. Like that. If you go too far, it's just in this particular section. You'll overshoot the bubbles if you go too far. You want to be in the middle of the platform. Down here there is a note. I just wanted to show that off again. Again, you, uh, that one as well, you want to jump a little bit before. This part's a little tricky. Um, the launcher kind of does help you build more momentum, so you can use that launcher box to the right in order to, to get a lot of momentum going over here to the left. But it's not required. All you have to do is just go through these arrows, and you'll get the speed anyway. So what I do is I just, like, stop in the air and start pressing left. And then what we'll do is we'll go up there and bounce up to that rope. Off the wall like this. And then you can just swing. It's a simple swinging part portion. You can, again, do flashier stuff like flinging across it. Um, but as you can see, that's not always consistent. You can overshoot that bubble when you do a fling. You can undershoot it like that. These are also bubbles which, like I said before, if you're not holding the jump button, they have a neutral bounce as well as a big bounce. So they're also inconsistent. You want to make sure you're holding down the jump button when you bounce off of all of these. 
you saw that first that first bounce was like a baby bounce. And then I got a big bounce. Here it's it's normally just safer just to just go straight down the walls like this. Um the faster way, again, is to hold right and go off of the wall a little bit. Just to drop down quicker. If I can show that off. Anything like that. And then all of these, just be safe. Just do your swings, just be safe. All of this is just on a cycle. Y you can kind of just follow the cycle if you'd like. Um, when I go back through the level, I'll show a quicker way. But there is a note down here you don't want to miss if you're doing all music notes. Also, just showing off that you can just go across the top of this room if you want and swing across the top. You don't have to go to the bottom. I think swinging off that top part is actually a little bit faster. If I can get back over to it. Ah, uh, here we go. It's faster just to swing straight off and jump into the launcher like this. Self-explanatory, this is just jumping on the rhythms. Here's a hidden note that I don't like. It's right over here, so you have to know to jump over this gap to find the third note in this level. And these bounces are kind of annoying, but there's your note if you're looking for your note. Here, all you gotta do is jump off the left wall. So just jump up and to the right. This can be a little finicky. I hold left and then I jump to get over those spikes rather than try and build up a swing. Because sometimes you'll try and swing and you'll just hit the spikes. It's real annoying that way. Here I want to show off that if you're on the right cycle, you can just hold right and you're immediately across. So like, as long as you jump off that first one when it's all the way to the left, you can just hold right coming off of this and you'll always bounce off of that. Now here in the end of the level, you do want to jump closer to the edge of the platforms in order to make all of these bubble jumps. It's just the one part earlier in the level where you have to be a little bit further away from the edge in order to time them correctly. I want to quickly run back through the level again, just to show off everything the fast ways. right on cycle just to go straight across these and get into the box. And again, all of this self-explanatory, just follow the path. That wall's never going to catch you. Jump in the middle. I'll just be safe here. Just take our time, safely swing over these. And then here, there's a cycle skip. If you jump in the middle of that rope, you can, you can get here fast enough to, uh, to get to this before it starts moving to the right. I'll show that off more when I get to the end, when I'm doing like advanced strats.
But again here, we don't really need to swing too much. We just want to hold left and jump. Here we just, again, just go off the side. We don't have to jump there. And then all this is free. All right, moving on to uh, level three. Here we're gonna get chased by a wall at the beginning. All of this, as you played, you know we'll just reset if you don't make it through this first section all in one shot. Thankfully it's all pretty simple stuff. That climb there, again, if you if you jump off the left wall instead of the right wall is a little bit faster, but... Here in uh, level 3, everything's kind of on a timer. You can either go through the top or the bottom here. If you're doing the bottom, you're going to grab the note, obviously. And here it's just about paying attention to the, the timing of the platforms. Everything's on the beat. I will say that if you pick, if you are picking up more music notes in this level, the more music you can hear does make it a little bit easier to tell what cycle some of the platforms are on. That's why you see me uh, just grab the notes. But you don't lose any time for grabbing them in this level. As long as you're holding right, you'll go underneath all of those spikes there. We're gone a good cycle there. But again, it's all of it's about patience and making sure you're paying attention to uh, what cycle everything is on as you approach it. Swing over here. You, you can go over here to the right and jump across, but it's faster to just double jump off of this to go to the left. Do you move at the same speed in the air from regular movement? Um, yes. Depending on if you're jumping off of a wall or not. If you're doing a wall jump, like kicking off a wall is faster than just like a, a neutral jump. So like when you see, um, I'll go into the tutorial real fast. When you see like the, 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 the little colored arrows, like the, the colored lines, you can see I'm moving fast because I'm jumping off the wall. I have momentum. But like if I'm just neutral jumping like this, it's the same as moving left or right. So if you ever see me just jumping, it's just because I'm just I'm just doing it just to do it. But if you can use some momentum to jump off of walls, some more advanced strats like this, use it to save time. Like jump like jumping as you fall off the sides of platforms like this. You'll see the like IL runners will do that. I don't do it because it's, it's very difficult for me to do, but I am showing it off for you just now. <laughs> but yeah, again, I'll just run straight through level three again real quick. It's all very much on rails. This is one you might want to just like practice for a while until you get it down but once you have the level down this is one that's it's always going to be the same time because it's just 100 percent consistency want to get to the end of the level again real quick just so I can show off that last room the climb one more time in here you don't have to pick up that note it's it's just as fast as to go underneath there now here you don't have to jump 
you can just fall and it's faster. But here you do have to jump. And again, you can just go under the spikes. You have just enough time to fit underneath these spikes. Have to wait because I'm not on the cycle. All right, again, when you get to this uh, this bubble on the green platform, bounce off of it twice. It saves time. All right, level four time. Again, this is a lot of just patience and just watching the cycles. Going underneath these is easier. You can also go on top of them, but of course you are risking hitting those spikes on top like that. So you can't just take your time and go underneath. This part can be a little tricky. You want to jump as it's turning and it kind of like pushes you up onto the next one like that. You can see there's a note over there on the left as well. That involves uh, kind of playing with this windmill a little bit. Like jumping straight up so you can get on top of this and get over. Here you have two paths. You can either go slow down the left, which is, yeah, this is safe. And there's a box down there that you jump into. The faster way, obviously, is, is what it's alluding to on the right, where you just drop straight down. And this is what you'll get used to as far as practice. Just kind of watch the box and use your periphery to look at the, the green platform below you so you can fall onto it. You'll notice that when I get on it, though, it is slippery. If I'm just neutral on there, that spike will hit me or it'll slide out from underneath me. So you do need to move with this platform. This is another on rail part. Again, you're just holding right. You want to jump as soon as you're close to the edge of these platforms. There's another note down there. So again, to grab that, you're going to want to bounce and then go neutral and just fall straight down in there. But I'll show jumping straight across as well. And you want to jump from here and bounce up to the top path. It's faster to take the top path here. So like you see the distance, the arc of your jump, you want to jump like right around here, like right where you have equidistance between the spikes and the bumper. So the arc of your jump lands on the bumper. If you miss it and you take the bottom path, it's not a big deal. It's slower because it involves, as you can see, the, uh, the up and down, and there's some launcher boxes. But going up top, you can just go straight across the top. It's faster. Now, there is a music note down there on the bottom that you can grab. Uh, I want to show off first that when you're going straight through and just holding right, you don't actually need to jump into these to get up there. You can just keep holding right, and you'll automatically hit that launcher box. Same here, you don't need to jump into this portal, you can just keep holding right and fall right into the portal. And this is all just cycles, just pay attention to the cycles. Here, you can take your time and swing across the top of the room if you want. As you can guess, the uh, quicker way is to do the fling across the top for both ropes. Now there's some inconsistent stuff with this room here. It's, I'm trying to show off if I can get it.
It's not doing it. Where this box will sometimes launch you and you'll get a huge swing off this rope. Like, it'll launch you way up into the sky. And it's, it's we don't want to see that, but... If you can recognize when it happens, you can course correct and fall directly onto that orange bumper. I can get this room to do what I want. It's not doing it for me now, though. Oh well, we'll just end the stage. Oh, it just did it. <laughs> you saw where I got a higher jump off of the bumper that time than usual? You want to just make sure you always fall onto that orange... the orange bumper. That launcher box is just inconsistent. Sometimes it gives you more momentum, and it's... there's no rhyme or reason to it. Level 5 is entirely cycles. Uh, we can just kind of hold right. For most of it. Here you can just wait. And just take your time. This is the chillest of the levels in my opinion. Um, but one of the hardest to optimize. I take the top path here just because I find it faster. Um, you can also take the bottom path. But again, you have to wait on the cycle in order to get through the bottom path. As well as these, uh, jumping off these walls and stuff. So I always take the top, because I can just go straight through, like this. There's a note up here. So, instead of going straight down here and, and going across down to the, the bottom, come up here and you can grab this note. And it's faster just to kill yourself and, and come back down here to the checkpoint. There's a few different ways to do this. I, I'm just going to do it the easy way. Just patiently. That wasn't patient. There I did release from the wall a little bit to fall a little bit faster. There's a note over here to the right. Getting this one's a little tricky. You, you want to be holding right. So I'm holding right right now to be on, on the side of the wall like this. And then hitting jump. So I jump straight up. Because uh, otherwise if you're not holding right, you'll, you'll do like a, a wall jump and come straight back out this portal. And it can be real annoying because you'll just keep coming out of the portal. And, and you'll get yourself stuck. You want to be holding right, and then do, and then jump. And again, here you just want to pay attention to what cycles you're on. There's a note down here, underneath the danger pickle. That thing right there, the danger pickle. Now this room, there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, just, it's not super consistent. I don't particularly love this room, to be frank. Uh, you, you can just swing over into those launcher boxes and hope that they launch you over to the right through the tunnel where you're gonna go. Uh, another way that you can try and do it is to swing yourself back to the portal to the right like this, and then hold left to hit the launcher boxes. Let me see if I can do that. But they're, they're both about the same consistency if you can learn to do it. Um, I, I kind of just do it the way it's intended if it'll work for you. You're gonna find as you do this room, it's not super consistent. <laughs> it's normally gonna launch you into those spikes right there. Please let me through. 
Thank you. So again, here's there's a there's a neutral bounce off of this that you'll normally get. You're gonna hold you wanna hold down the jump button when you hit that bubble, otherwise it won't get you the full bounce. Now here we have again the option of a top path or a bottom path. Speed running in this level, the top path is always the faster path. Uh, the bottom path is going to be the more safe path for like learning the level. So if you're first starting, it's easier to pay attention to the cycles here in this bottom path. If you accidentally take the bottom path and you mean to go to the top path, we have these healthy little bumper bumpers here so you can go to whichever one you want to go back to but I take the top path because even though it looks more dangerous once you get to this part down here it's much faster than waiting for as you can see the cycles of those green platforms above here all I can do is just hold hold to the right and get all these jumps I do want to show that off again. I jump off of this, but I don't hit that, that that gravity change because it's faster to just hold right and fall upward and then jump into this this gravity change than to to do it the other way where you have to to bounce bounce off of this here and then off of the walls. All of this here, that's slower than just falling directly into there. Another self-explanatory part, so let's just get through this real quick. Again, we've got the bottom path where you can see there's stuff on cycles. This time the bottom path, I honestly think is very difficult. So it's going to be easier just to take the top path. You can overswing that as you can see. So if you let go in the air, you can have some control of your momentum. Your momentum will stop if you let go of the, uh, the trigger in the air. So if I'm holding right and I let go, if I see I'm going too far, I can let go of the direction and it'll slow down my momentum of, uh, in the air so I can make sure I land on the bubble. Just go to the end. Hey, only a few levels left. These are so execution based that there's not a lot to go over other than make sure you're jumping into the right things. Um, here is your first note if you're looking for notes. It's down there. I don't remember if I showed off all the notes in level 5 or not. I think I did. Here, you're gonna fall down and then jump. So, you can do this where you, you jump off of the walls to be safe. And if you hold the opposite direction, you'll slide slowly. Or you can just fall straight down and, and do these jumps like that. Um, it's not really that hard to learn to do the falling straight down part. But if you're just starting off, you can just do the slide down the wall and take it safe. Or you can just fall straight through. All of these jumps again, as close to the edge of the platform as you can get, but not too far off the edge. Here, I'm just holding right and then jumping at the very end. Pay attention to uh, the cycle these are on before you commit to these jumps. 
And then here you want to just jump straight down into this. And it'll launch you up out of here. I do want to show that there is a note here. So if we come back out and go and, and start a portal loop, you can get up to this note up here. And I missed a note somewhere earlier in the level. I don't think I can get back to it. I'll show it on the uh, next time through. Here, you can just jump off the walls like that. Swing. This room, it's just going to take some time just learning to time your jumps. It's more lenient than you think it is. But you'll get that room with practice. Now that jump you want to do a little bit further away from the edge. Let's see how far back it sets me. Okay. Because I want to show off if you go too far close to the edge here. Uh, it's not shown. If you go too close to the edge. Here we go. Ah. So if you go too close, you will miss these this last set of arrows. Here we go. You'll, oh, I almost. There's spikes in the, the ceiling, is what I'm trying to get at. So you don't want to wait too long and then miss this last set of arrows because you'll just fly up into the sky. You want to wait until you're just before the edge so you can make this jump. And then jump from the edge on this one. Level 7. This one, again, is all cycles. So this one is really going to test your patience. Especially these ropes at the very beginning. When I first starting off, I, I just did this where I would wait till they would go ne neutral. And just really take my time. But as you can see, when you're trying to get through that bottom part, you do need to have momentum. To get enough over to the bumper. There's a note down here. Now, to get this cycle correctly, you want to jump as that platform is appearing. So jump now and just keep holding right. Left side, not right side. Because this is two jumps versus one jump. And then just keep holding right here if you want to be doing any percent. If you're going for notes, you want to go up here and grab that. There's two different paths you can take here. Uh, it's kind of, they're about the same really, depending on your preference. I find the bottom path easier, but the top path, if, if you're good at timing, you, you can do the top path. You can just swing through here. You can do a fling directly out of this portal. So that's pretty much free. But uh, the second one you want to take your time. The momentum you get out of that portal makes that fling very free because you have so much speed. This is more just very self-explanatory, just timing your jumps. Again, that one close to the edge, this one close to the edge. Now the, the clicking sound that you hear is when, when they're going to fall. So you want to time it so that you're jumping before that clicking sound. There's a note down there. And then here we just, again, just be patient. A lot of the speed in this game is just patience, because as long as you're patient, you're not going to die. 
and you're just gonna, by virtue of not dying, get a very good time. So I recommend building up consistency before you start actually learning the, uh, the speed tech of the game. Yes, dying is very slow. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, that's why I'm trying to show off, like, as much of the stuff that's consistency first before I, like, start going through an actual run and you see me do some of the speed tech. Uh, level 8, there's not much I can tell you other than good luck. You're gonna learn this one just by doing it. You definitely don't want to die <laughs> in the first section here since the checkpoint sends you all the way back to the beginning. I will say that this jump, you want to jump a little bit before the edge. Just that one jump when you're in the inverted gravity. You want to jump before the edge, rather than right at the edge. Otherwise, you fall into the spikes. So a little bit before, like this, and then at the edge for this one. Now for one of the worst rooms, those spikes right there, and I'll just show it again. This is all going to be muscle memory. It's it's very hard to judge the, those spikes. When I talk about those spikes, I mean that these right here. The, this set of five on the top and bottom. When you're moving full speed, it's, you're just going to have to learn the muscle memory for jumping over those. They're going to kill you every time until you do. There... Once you get to that top portion that I was just at, you want to make sure that you jump back here. You don't want to wait too long, otherwise you will be off cycle and you'll hit the spikes. That's all self-explanatory right there. The ropes. I like to take the first two ropes and then the second two ropes. So like, take the first two. And you can kind of take your time to fling off the second two. I'm trying to show the that you do have time for this. There we go. So like, if you get stuck here in the ropes, you have time to, to do the reset like that. As long as you're paying attention to the second two. I'll start over so I can do it all in one, but... If you die on the ropes, it is it is possible to save it without resetting your run. It just stinks because the ropes aren't neutral anymore. So it's not consistent. Again here, jump right before. Don't wait too long. And then here, again, jump early, so you set yourself up to uh, not run into the spikes. Now the ropes, they'll just take time, but as long as you, you hold right a little bit when you hit each one, they'll be consistent every time. It's just a matter of learning the timing. Um, I'm going to show you the notes in this level. I hate them. One of them's here in this portal to the right. Now, you can take your time and just go down this slow if you want. I recommend coming down to this platform. Um, some people will, will go for a strat where they'll jump straight down to the right like this. And just do this. Um, but I like going over to the left like this and falling to the platform. That way I, I'm the master of my own fate. <laughs> Again, just pay attention to the cycles for that jump. For here, if you want to grab the note that's part of this, you want to jump up into this and across back into the same portal, then fall into the yellow. That gets you up here, which is where the note is at. Now you'll see, 
if you're listening to the snare beat, you'll see this is shooting out on the snare beat. It gets a little bit off cycle sometimes, but normally when you hit here, it's going to be on the snare beat. So you can just listen for the snare beat to avoid those. Again, under and then over. Not too bad there. Using portals. Here, the these like the drag. I, there's no way to explain it unless you play the level, but those platforms like have additional gravity or drag. So you have to hold right on them more. There's a note down here, by the way. <laughs> That's going to be the most annoying note to grab if you start running all music notes, I'll tell you right now. Here, just go neutral and let this launch you up, then start jumping. Because if you're not if you're not holding neutral, sometimes you'll miss this platform. Like you'll hit the side of it. I'm trying to show that off. It's not letting me. But if you're not holding neutral when you hit that box, you you will just not get that platform. And again, on all of these bumpers. You want to make sure you're holding the jump button, otherwise you will not get the full launch off of them. And the very right of the tiny platform. Yeah, exactly. The, getting that last note, the, the the timing of falling down into that gap, it's it's very difficult to learn. But once you once you get it, it's consistent. All right, let's get into the actual like meat, the, the actual run. I'll start running through and call out some of the stuff that I'm doing quickly as I do it. Tutorial, there's not much to it. Again, jump off the left here. Again, jump to the left and then hold right so you just fall straight down. We're gonna fling here. Swing and fling. Another fling. Fling across this. I normally show off and have to I have to show up and have to wait for the cycle. And that's not a bad thing, because you're going to be on about 47 seconds to finish your level. You can get on a cycle earlier, the 45, if you get that climb really quite, uh, fast at the beginning. But 47 is the consistent thing that you're going for, really. Again, jump off the left here. Get closer to the left so you don't hit these spikes. Gonna fall down and to the right. Jump and then hold right so you can fling to the right. You can just run into that bumper, you don't need to jump. Fling across there. And then be patient and pay attention to where you are. You have to stop there usually and wait for those spikes. Again, closer to the wall. I wasn't being patient, but jumped left here. I'm gonna wait for the cycle. Always faster to wait for the cycle than to try and rush through and die. Fling across both of these. You see I'm automatically on the cycle to just go straight across the top.
Again, slide down just a little bit there to, to ensure that you're safely through that spike corridor. By doing those hops there, you saw I got into the box just a little bit early. That's just the tiniest optimization. I, I'm not really recommending you go for that again. I also went to the left of there, again, a tiny optimization, like that. <laughs> These are the type of things you don't want to start incorporating until, like, you're trying to put down really, really fast times. They're, they're not required to get a really good run. They are required if you're going for, like, low 15s. In game time. But if you're looking just to get like sub 16, not super required. Again, you want to kind of hit the middle of this rope. I'm going to try and show this off. That's too high. I try to start from a little further away from the back here of the edge. There we go. Hit the middle of the rope and swing so that you're on a cycle for this. You can jump off that wall like that, blindly. It's very difficult to do, even for me, because it's, again, you're not, you can't see where you're jumping from. Now, when I'm in the elevator boxes, you see me just like dancing around because there's nothing else I can do. You, you do want to be sure that when you're getting toward the end of where the box is going to open up, that you're not smashing that the uh, jump button. Because uh, as soon as that box opens, you gain control. So if you hit the button, when the box opens, you're going to jump out of the box. And you will lose time in pretty much every instance that that happens. So you want to dance, but just... Make sure you, you rein yourself in toward the end. <laughs> Again, this stage is pretty consistent. As long as you're just holding right. There's a couple spots that you'll want to pause just a little bit, but it's mostly just hold right. Except for here where you're holding left. Fall there and then jump here. Then go under the spikes. We should be right on cycle for these. And that will be consistent. As long as you go through the level the same way every time, those will always just be ready and waiting for you like that. Again, bounce twice on this. And you're pretty consistently always going to get a 120 in this level. very difficult to ever make that cycle so I always just wait and again you can just kind of go under those spikes here I'm just gonna drop straight down and jump left into the box
That just takes time and muscle memory. Again, you could just hold right. You don't have to jump here. Again, you could just hold right. You don't have to jump here. And then fling across these ropes. Because you've got a lot of momentum coming out of that portal. Room's a little bit lenient. I, I made a small mistake there, and you can see I was able to uh, to just go right back to the launcher and fix it. Those walls don't close too quick, so you're okay to make some small mistakes. Small, small mistakes in that room. Here, if you get to the platform fast enough and jump off this right wall and straight up, you can actually make this cycle. I'm gonna do this again because I want to show off the optimum. Again, this is more advanced, so you don't have to do this, you can just wait. But this does save a couple seconds by making that cycle. Every path, top path. I'm going to just fall straight down to the portal here. You get a lot of momentum coming out of that, so be careful. Now, you can't jump straight out of the box like I said there. If you time your input frame perfectly as the box opens, you can jump out of it. It's kind of a swag strat, to be honest, because there's... If you take an intentional death coming out of the box, you can also set up for the end of the stage to be on better cycles, but both ways are good. Largely because this room is usually going to kill your run. As you can see... Um, please. Normally a lot more consistent than this, but it's being the way it is. Can you please let me through? There we go. And just fall upward because it's the top path. Again, jump here, don't hit that arrow, just fall upward and go into that arrow. I'll show off the bottom path. The top path is fastest, but as you can see, you can you can also do the bottom path. It's it's around the same to be honest, but it's just the bottom path is a lot more stuff to deal with. So I just prefer the top. I'm gonna try and bang my head on the ceiling here. Nope, didn't quite get it. I wanna show this off. If you jump just right and hit your head on the ceiling, it resets your momentum so that you're back into a fall instead of like the, you'll fall faster like that. It's a small optimization. You see how I fall faster if I hit the ceiling? rather than like jumping upward like this and then falling. So like, if I'm able to get all of that in one go, 
I can pull this off. I was able to do it on Hotfix the other night. This, uh, this box at the very end of this segment will usually be closed unless you do this optimally. And you have to wait for it. But if you can get this right, like that, I might make it in time now. I did. It closes at 26 seconds and you have to wait till 28 seconds for it to open again. So that automatically saves a couple seconds right there if you can do that trick. Again, I'm just holding right until I get here and then I jump. You don't have to jump for any of the other stuff in that corridor. You just hold. Again, just pay attention to what cycle these are on. Just jump straight off and you'll be on the correct cycle. Here you can fall straight through. That takes a little bit of getting used to, but you can just do it. You can also fling across there like I just did. Now again, I jumped a little bit before the edge there, just to be sure that I hit all of the gravity arrows and I don't go flying up into the ceiling. That, that was too much momentum. There we go. Jump there. I'll show that again. You want to you want to jump right before it's going to appear to be on the right cycle. So jump now. Jump to the left. And then here I'm just going to be holding right and just let, letting it all carry me. And you should be right on the cycle for all of this stuff. Stop a little bit there, and then fling us out of this portal. Oh, I jumped a little early. One thing I do use here is I listen to the music, and then I kind of time it to the music at that part. be more consistent you can kind of do a double back here and it'll usually set you up so that you can get straight through this segment you can if you're fast enough like that you can fling straight across there um, I was almost on the bad cycle for it though as you saw I almost hit those spikes so it's very risky but it does save time That's one that I normally don't go for in runs. But if you find yourself on a good cycle for it, like that, then you can go for it. And again, a level, level 8 is all just going to be learning muscle memory. The only reason I'm good at this level is because I put so many hours into the game. Every single segment of this level is going to uh, cause issues for you at some point. 
it's usually going to be again this jump right here that jump and then also right here make sure again you jump earlier than you think And now again with these ropes, you can take your time, you can hold right a little bit before you jump on each of them to ensure that you get across all of them. And then what I'm going to do is fall again down here to the left. That way I'm on this platform, there's no spikes shooting at me. I'm, I'm my own master, I can, I can just wait for the cycle. And here you can just, again, fall into this, go across, kind of listen to the snare hits in the background, or take your time if you need to. Have fun playing with portals, go under and then over. A lot of this, this stuff looks harder than it actually is. It's just a matter of making sure you jump so that those spikes that are chasing you don't hit you. Oh, there I showed it. I, I wasn't holding neutral, and then I hit the side of the platform. I wanted to show that off. You want to make sure when you're in the box, don't touch your, your D-pad at all. Just let the box launch you out. Then holding the jump button on these bumpers. Otherwise, they won't bump you up high enough to hit these uh, launchers. And again, all of this is just on rails. Just keep holding right. And on tiny platforms, just jump off the very right side of it. Even with three deaths, it was 240. Like, my PB in that level is 227, I think. It's only 13 seconds with three deaths. Just depends where you take your deaths on that level. So yeah, that concludes like the actual like tutorial showcase. Was there certain things that you had questions about like in specific levels or different stuff you've encountered? Oh, what was it about the ropes? I'm just curious. Ah, yeah. Whereas, like, uh, like I said, if you die and then the rope is still swinging. Yeah, if it's no longer in the neutral position, then it's going to behave badly. As long as it's in that neutral position, it'll like it'll always do the same thing every time for you. So it's deterministic. But trying to get to the rope here. So I'm gonna swing. This is, let me get to some spikes. Yeah, here we go. So let's say I, I got this rope here, and now it's swinging. It's it's doing weird stuff. Uh, it, it's see, I tried to launch off of it there, and it didn't give me the full launch. <laughs> So yeah, as long as you, you get it right every time, it's cool, but that means you have to be perfect on every run. Uh, and that's why the ropes kind of suck. <laughs> they're, they're the thing I hate the most in the game and took the longest for me to get consistent with. Yeah, that's that portion with the, um, the, the spike wall chasing you and the four, the four ropes is... Yeah, that just takes a lot of practice. And again, like I said, if you um, if you just hold right just a little bit, just like a fraction of a second before you make each jump off of each rope, uh, it, it makes it slightly more consistent. That's the, that's my best advice for you. Cool, cool.
Yeah. And, and a, a good resource to, to look at again is um, if you want to see really advanced stuff and, and try and learn it, go look at the ILs on the leaderboards, uh, the individual levels. Because the stuff they do in those is like, yeah, it's, that's where I picked up a lot of the little optimizations. Some of it is stuff you can, you might want to incorporate. Other stuff is stuff that's, it's like this, like that is, is, is optimal. Like jumping off the side and using that momentum, you see how much farther I go. Uh, it's, it's way faster, but it's also much more difficult to do. Like see, you'll also whiff it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, th that's how they gain time in tutorial. It's like jumping off the side like that. And they can do it here, where they can just jump straight across and get both ropes. It's just, you save so much time by using momentum like this, like that. It's just very inconsistent for me, because I play with controller. Uh, on keyboard, it might be a little bit easier. I'm un unsure. <laughs> Me neither. It's why I use controller. And as you can see, even with controller, I'm, I'm not super precise, and I, I'm I'm fairly good at this game now. <laughs> but yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Hope it helps you a lot. <laughs> yes. Uh, I I have another tutorial that I have pinned already in the channel, um, but I also will be uploading this, and I'll pin this as well. And uh, I, I wish you the best. If you have any questions when you're doing your actual runs, I'm always around. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much.